Pre-ordering, it's something that we're told not to do due to the fact a game may not be what it seems. Pre-ordering used to be something that you needed to do if you intended to play the game on launch week. I remember the week Halo 3 came out. On the weekend, I went with my parents to three different shops to try and find a copy of Halo 3, and at the third one, we got the very last copy. This just doesn't happen anymore. There's plenty of games available on launch day and thereafter, so there's no real reason to pre-order games. So even though pre-ordering is down, and we would like to think that people are waiting for reviews and YouTube videos to see whether the game's okay, it's more likely that there's just no need to pre-order games anymore, which means we're gonna see companies try different ways to entice customers to put money Money down before the game is released. One of these new trends is Day Zero Editions. Now this is something I first heard about with Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, where if you pre-order the game, you get 24 hour early access to the game, so no one else who walks into a retail shop will be able to get that game within that 24 hour window. If this trend is successful, I think we'll see it across other games, since promises of in-game items don't seem to be transferring into pre-orders as much anymore. One question that could be posed is, why if game sales are doing relatively well, do publishers want more pre-orders? Well, it's for a number of reasons. One of the main reasons is the amount of pre-orders is a way to tell how interested people are in the game. This can then lead to them deciding more money in the marketing budget if it is needed. The other is these companies spend millions of dollars on games and hope that they can get a return on investment, so a customer offering up money before the game is even out is appealing to them. Also, if pre-orders didn't exist, millions of dollars could be spent on a game's marketing budget that was unnecessary and could result in a loss. So in short, pre-orders are the publisher's way to confirm how many copies of a game they will sell. Pre-ordering is also down due to a few notable bait and switch incidents in recent years, or games just being plain bad. Aliens Colonial Marines is one that comes to mind. A game where the pre-release footage looks so much better than the final release game. Not only that, the game was terrible, so many people who pre-ordered that game probably wouldn't have if they never got around to pre-ordering it. This is due to the content creators on the internet, on sites like YouTube, providing opinions and reviews on games as soon as they are released. Besides just Aliens Colonial Marines, Watch Dogs, which released earlier this year, had graphics that looked amazing at the E3 2012 reveal, but the final game lacked them. These occurrences will result in a decrease in pre-orders over time as people don't want to spend their money on something they may potentially hate. There are also many other reasons for declining pre-orders. There are so many games released each year that consumers are having a hard time picking and choosing which games to pre-order or which games to buy in general. Add on top of that declining price of games after release and sales shortly after release, it seems more and more that there is no real reason to pre-order a game at all. Many people still pre-order games from a franchise that they know and like. This can still, however, result in a game being bad. Just because a developer made a game you liked before doesn't mean they can or will do it again. It's becoming more and more obvious that gamers as a community tend to have the upper hand when it comes to the transaction of games for money. Even just this year, watching EA delay Battlefield Hardline because players didn't feel like the game was worth the full price and felt more like a DLC, not only just voting with your wallet but speaking out about a game you dislike through a website like YouTube is not going unnoticed by companies anymore as media is shifting more for their target market. Even instances where companies decide not to provide review copies for a game before release can decrease the sales potential for that game. For example, Sims 4, which is releasing in September, is rumoured to not be releasing any review copies until after release. This is not a common trend from EA, so it could mean that the game isn't actually what they wanted it to turn out to be, or that they know the public won't like the game. So they do this so that they can get as many sales as they can on release day before anyone's had the chance to check out reviews of the game or anyone else's opinion on the game. This practice will fail to work over time as more customers would rather watch a video on YouTube with opinions on a game over a review. Overall, it seems like companies are going to have to come up with a good reason to keep customers purchasing games before release since there are so many pros to not pre-ordering a game and not many cons. Hopefully with declining pre-orders instead of companies just trying to entice customers more and more with bonuses like the Day Zero Edition, they will aim to provide more accurate representations of the games in the first place. As the number of people pre-ordering will be so low that making a worthwhile game that people talk about will be what prompts customers to buy a game instead of a marketing campaign. This brings me to the end of this episode of Critical on pre-ordering video games. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like and if you've got any comments on pre-ordering video games, put them down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. I'll see you all next time.